Uh, hello, uh, we are starting the class. And uh, yesterday I have already updated the website and uh, you can see uh, the quiz results. And uh, uh, each weekly quiz uh, has three questions. And uh, each question is worth 25 points uh, plus attendance. Attendance also uh, worth 25 points. So uh, the total score of each quiz is 100 points. And uh, if your quiz score is missing or you have uh, pro any problem about the quiz results, uh, please uh, reach, reach out to me. And I also uh, updated the accuracy result of assignment one. You can take a look. And some students uh, have zero accuracy. This is, this is due to uh, the following reasons. And I have summarized uh, the reasons uh, for accuracy zero. Uh, the most common, the most common error is incor incorrect output format. Uh, some of the some students, uh, their program outputs uh, do not meet the requirements. Uh, I will show some example. Here, here is the sample output. Uh, here is the sample output, and you can copy the sample outputs to some text editor. And uh, some students uh, delete this space and also add additional line break, and this is not allowed. You cannot add a line break by yourself. If you do this, uh, this will produce incorrect outputs. So you cannot add a, a line break by yourself. And uh, some students, some students uh, omit this this message. So some students uh, do not output uh, these lines. So, so some some students delete this line. And uh, and uh, this is also considered incorrect outputs. And some students even delete more messages. Some students even uh, s skip uh, uh, more more words. Uh, so all of all of these are uh, incorrect outputs. So you you need to ensure that your program output must be exactly exactly the same uh, as those in the provided sample, and uh, exactly the same means every character, including space new line, should be the same uh, as those in the provided example. And uh, I suggest you can take a look at the call, uh, call template. So here is the call template. And uh, you see that first you need to output a string. And follow, those, follow this string, there is no line break. So you cannot output a line break by yourself here. Then, this, then your program need to read from user from user input, and then after you compute uh, some variables, then you need to output the following uh, messages. So 
you need to pay attention to this line. You need to show this line. So I suggest you can modify this call te template uh, when, when you complete the assignment. And uh, also some students uh, um, has one problem. Uh, they do not properly initialize variable. And uh, this is the one of the most common mistakes. Not, uh, this is one of the uh, most common mistake for beginners, uh, not initializing variables. And uh, this can lead to undefined behavior. So you, you see that uh, he some example here. He, he delect, uh, uh, for example, uh, this line declares three variables without initialization. So the, vari the value of these variables are unknown. And uh, he tried to compute the value of j based, based on some unknown values. So the value of j is also unknown. And, uh, and uh, if you do not initialize uh, local variables, then its value is uh, in indeterminate. Uh, this means you, you do not know I its value. If, if you do not initialize a variable, then you, then you, you don't know its value. And uh, trying to access, trying to ex access such an, init an initialized variable can lead to un undefined behavior. So, uh, because the behavior is undefined, uh, you 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 might you might not uh, detect this error because in your computer in your computer your program is fine, but but if uh, you you run your program in another compiler, then your program might crash. So the behavior is compiler dependent. The behavior is uh, depend depends on the compiler. Different different compiler might might produce different results for undefined beha behavior. And uh, there is also one problem. Uh, some students. Uh, use arrays. Some students use arrays, and uh, we haven't we haven't taught uh, we we haven't taught array. Array will be covered in later uh, lectures. Array will be introduced uh, in in the in the in this week, and and for assignment one, you you don't need to use array. Uh, for for assignment one, you you don't need to use array, you don't need to use for loop, you you only need to use some uh, arithmetic, some division, some uh, addition. You can complete this assignment. You you do not need to use array, and and some students uh, use array. And uh, if you choose to use array, you need to ensure uh, the array index remains the within the valid range. If you try to access an index uh, which is outside the, the range of the array, this can also lead to undefined behavior. And uh, this is known as, uh, and, and uh, this is the, this is also one of the most common mistakes for beginners. 
uh, this is known, known as index out of range. And uh, later we will, we will cover uh, when we introduced array, I will talk about this point in more details. So, so if, if you only have a partial understanding of array, it is best not to use array because you don't understand the fundamental principle. If you want to use array, you need to ensure you know the fundamental principle. Otherwise, your program might result in the disastrous outcomes. So before the day, uh, before the deadline, you you still have chance to uh, fix your uh, your program, and I will update the accuracy of assignment of assignment one before uh, the deadline. Uh, if no question, then I will return to uh, the, the slides. And uh, in, in previous week, I introduced uh, C++ basics. And uh, we we learn uh, integer and floating point division. Uh, we also learned uh, type casting. And uh, I remember this is the last page. Uh, this slide is about increment operators. And uh, this operator is plus plus uh, two consecutive plus. This is the increment operator, and uh, the name uh, the name of the C plus plus programming language is due to this uh, operator, and the plus plus means you add one to to the value of a variable, so n plus plus means uh, you perform um, you assign n plus one to n. You can also write. Uh, you can also write uh, plus plus n. If you write n plus plus, this is known as post increment, because plus plus is after n. So so this is post increment. And uh, if you write plus plus n, this is known as pre increment, because uh, plus plus is before n. And uh, so in this example, uh, plus plus n and n plus plus uh, result uh, produce the same result. So for this for this for this example. So if you want to uh, perform, you want to assign n plus one to n, then you can write n plus plus. Uh, this is post I increment, or you can write plus plus n, and uh, this is pre increment. Uh, both results are the same. However, if you want to combine with other expressions, for example, you want to combine uh, increment with multiplication then you need to pay attention. Because uh, post-increment and uh, pre-increment uh, might lead to different results. And uh, here is one example. Uh, let me
uh, and uh, let's see this example. And uh, here, uh, the initial value of n is two, and then we, and then we carry out this statement. So this this statement will, you, you need to determine, uh, which operation will be carried out first, and uh, due to the parentheses, so we know, n plus plus will be carried out first. Then you need to decide this va the value of this expression. The value is of this expression is two or two plus one. You need to determine this. And uh, this will lead to different results. So you need to determine the value of this expression is uh, two or two plus one. And uh, for the for post increment, uh, for post increment, this value is two. This value is two. It's the same as its initial value. So for post increment, this uh. The value the value of this expression is two, so the result the, the result of m is two times two. So we see that, and the, and the then after this statement, n will be added by one, so n becomes three. So if if you print n, so the value of n is three, and the, the value of m m is four, four. Uh, four is two times two. So in fact, this statement is equivalent to uh, you perform. You you perform uh, you you perform uh, two times n and uh, assign this value to m. And the lamb you perform n plus plus. So post increment is equivalent to the two statements. So you can decompose, you can deco you can de decompose this uh, statement into into the into the following two lines. And the. Uh, uh, let's see another example. So another another example is uh, pre-increment. So here. So this example is pre-increment. Uh, plus plus is before n. And also, you need to determine the value of m. Uh, for this example, the value of this expression is three. Because uh, two plus uh, because this is pre-increment, so two will be uh, so so two n will be added by one. So the value of this expression is three, and three times two equals six, so m is six. And uh, after this statement, n, n, uh, sorry, oh sorry. So after this statement, the value of n is three and uh, the value of m is six. You can also decompose this statement into two a statement you can uh, so this statement this statement is equivalent to the following two lines first you perform addition uh, you, you you perform eighty by one and then you perform you assign two times n to m So you have two 
you have two ways to to perform uh, this statement. So so if you are a programmer, you will uh, you you prefer which which way? You prefer this line? You prefer to use the pre increment, or you prefer to decompose uh, into two statements. Which which one will you use? You will use this line, or this the or this style. So so if you are a programmer, and you can decide, uh, you can decide your style. You want to use this style. Or you want to uh, use the second style. Uh, if you prefer the first style, uh, please raise your hand. If you prefer this style. Oh, okay. And uh, if if you prefer the second style, please uh, raise your hand. Oh, okay. So most most people um, prefer the second the second style. And uh, in my opinion, the, the second style is better. It's better than the first style. Because the second, sti the second style is more, uh, it's more straightforward. It is, it is easy to understand. So you, you, if you see the two statements, you immediately know n, n will be added by 1. And then you assign 2 times n to m. So this is very easy to understand. However, if you choose the first style, this style is not very obvious. You need to determine which expression will be carried out first. And uh, you, need to s you need to determine the value of this expression. So this is uh, less straightforward. So uh, according to the principle of clean code, we should use the second style Se because second style is uh, is more more clear. So in this slide, I summarized. Uh, it is not recommended to use post and pre-increment because it is difficult to understand. Uh, you, you, you can always decompose, you can always de decompose uh, this statement into two statements to avoid uh, the use of post-increment or pre-increment. And uh, we already introduced the increment operator and uh, we also have a similar operator, decrement. Decre decrement uh, uh, is this one, uh, two consecutive uh, minus. Uh, this is the decrement, decrement operator. And this operator means you assign n minus one to n. Uh, and uh, this slide uh, introduces uh, comments. And uh, in C++, you, you have two ways to, to write comments. The, f the first way is single-line comments. And the uh, single-line comments begins uh, with two, two slash, uh, two consecutive slash. So you if you want to comment out some line, you can use uh, two slash. So I already use this. This is a single line uh, comment. So, uh, so you see the color. The color is different uh, from the the, the color. Uh, the color of this of comment is different from other statements. Uh, or you can use the multi line multi line uh, comments. This is from the C programming language. If you want to uh, use multi-line, then you use 
Uh, this is begins from a slash, then by a star. And uh, if you want to terminate the comments, then you uh, use star and the slash. So you see that uh, thi uh, this this operator begins multi-line common uh, multi-line comments, and uh, this this operator finishes multi-line uh, multi-line comments. And uh, when when programming, uh, we u we usually uh, recommend uh, choosing meaningful na names instead of using comments. Uh, the following is one example. So, uh, for example, it it is common to declare a variable like this. So you declare a variable. Its name is very short. It's some abbreviation like uh, fs then you you might need to write some comments to uh to this statement however this is unnecessary this is unnecessary it is better to use a, a meaningful name so you you can choose file name more meaningful file name like file size So for example, I declare a variable. And uh, you don't need to worry about uh, the name is too long because the IDE will help you. For example, when, when I want to type this variable name, So you you see that uh, this is uh, completion. This is uh, completion. When you type fil, then your IDE will pop up a menu for you to to select the related variables, variable names. So you you don't need to worry about uh, typing the variable name. This means you can select any file any file name you want. Uh, for example, I want to type. So you see that this, uh, this UID will help you to, to auto complete uh, this, this variable name. I think I will pause here, and the uh, next we will have a quiz. So you can uh, log in the Rubio app first, and uh, we and the during the quiz we cannot use laptop or tablet, so you need to close your laptop and uh, close your tablet. So I think uh, maybe you need to close your tablet or or laptop, and only after the quiz is over, uh, you you can start to use. And uh, if you cannot uh, log in Rubio, please raise your hand. I will uh, I will provide the answer sheets. So 
anyone need answer sheets? So the first question is, we have three statements. And uh, you need to determine the value of va uh, VAR3 after the three statements. Uh, 30 seconds left. Uh, if you use Zuvio, you can change the your answer many times before the end of the quiz. Next, I will uh, turn on the second question. Uh, one of the following statements is illegal. So you, you need to choose the illegal statements in C++. So the, the second option is two double quotes. So the, this is the first double quote and the second double quote. And the inside the double quote is nothing. Inside the double quote is empty.
30 seconds left. Then I will turn on the last question. Uh, for the last question, uh, we have two statements. And uh, you need to determine the value of VAR2 after the two statements. And in the, in, in the first statement, uh, I use this data type. We, we already introduced this data type. Uh, 30 seconds left. So uh, I will turn off all the questions. Uh, and uh, if you use answer sheets, uh, remember to write down your student ID and your name. And uh, sub submit your uh, answer sheets to me. And uh, next, uh, let's see the, the answer of the quiz.
Oh, so, so the answer is the second one. Uh, the second one. And let's see this one. And uh, we want to compute the, va the value of VR3. And first, we need to uh, compute this division. And you need to determine this division is integer division or floating point division. Uh, because this will lead to different results. And uh, this division is integer division because VAR1 and VAR2 are both integers. So 13 divided by 3 is, is, uh, is 4. Oh, so, so based, based on inter integer division, the value of this expression is 4. And 4 times, four times 3 is 12. So the answer of this uh, question is 12. And uh, you, you might be confused by this expression. Even though you assign a floating point to, a, to an integer, its value is still an integer. So uh, in fact, this value will be convert to, to integer 3. And then integer 3 will be assigned to VR2. So this, so de to determine this uh, division, you, you only, you need to uh, know the data types of the numerator and the denominator. For the for this question, the answer is uh, the first one. The first one is legal, Ill illegal. The other three are le legal. Um, the first one is illegal because uh, this is a scape sequence. You you begin with a backslash, so this is a scape sequence. So this means you want to print the double quote character. But but in this statement we do not have the terminating double double quote. So if you try to if you try to compile this line, if you try to compile this line, this leads to to syntax error because. Uh, the, the the compiler shows missing terminating double quote character, so you need you need a terminating double quote, and uh, you see that uh, the 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 screen outputs the double quote character. Uh, so this is the escape sequence. And this one is legal. Th this this prints nothing, so th this is legal. And the third one, uh, notice that this is not a backslash. This is normal slash. So this is not a escape sequence. Uh, so this is not a escape sequence, and uh, you can. Uh, include uh, many slashes you want. So this is also legal because this is not a scape sequence. And uh, the fourth one, this is floating, po uh, floating point constant. This is sci scientific notation. And uh, this is very common. I in fact, in many programming la language accept this notation. So this means two times 10 raised to 3. This means 2 times 1,000. So, so you see that 2e3, this is 2,000. This is scientific notation of a floating point. And uh, we all introduced in pre previous week, if you So you can have a look uh, of the slides. 
Uh, this this slide is about a scape, a scape sequence, and uh, this slide is about uh, floating point constants, and uh, we have many ways to express a, f a, f a floating point. You can either use scientific notation or floating point notation. Uh, and uh, let's uh, see the last question. Uh, for this one, uh, the, an the answer is uh, the last one. Uh, none of the above is true. Uh, so y y if you try to execute the two statements, you, you notice that this data type this data type is unsigned. Uh, unsigned means uh, this data type can only store non-native value. But you, you, s you store a negative value in this variable. So this, this will cause overflow. This will cause overflow. So the result is, 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 is uh, so you don't know the its actual value. Suppose now I try to print VAR2. You try to print VAR2. Uh, so you see that <laughs> the result is uh, beyond your intention. However, if you choose the right data type, so suppose I remove the unsigned. If you choose the correct data type, and uh, this data type can save uh, negative, negative integers. So if, if you change the data type, uh, the answer will be uh, negative 10 plus 30. So the, the result will be 20. Uh, so it, it is important to know the size range of your data type. If, if, the, if, if the value is uh, if the value is outside the, the size range, then uh, this will cause overflow. So for this example, uh, this line cause overflow. So the so none of the, the, up, the above is, is true. Uh, any question about the quiz? Uh, if no question, uh, we think w we can take a break for 10 minutes.
Uh, hello, uh, let's uh, continue our class. And uh, next, I will introduce the third part, console input output. So here is the console input output. And uh, in C++, we use objects C in, C out to, to perform input output operations. And uh, in order to use the two objects, you need to include the IO string library. Uh, this is because C in and C out are not predefined variables. So you need to, and uh, the, the, two ver the two objects are defined in this, in this library. So if you use the two variables, you need to uh, include the library first. So for, for example, I want to use C out to print some, me some message. And uh, if you omit IO string, then the compiler will show some error message, C out was not declared in this scope. Uh, thi this is because C out is, uh, is, is defined in this library. So you need to include this library in order to use C out. And uh, we also uh, use this line. We also use using then space std. If you omit this line, uh, if you omit this line, then you see you also see some error message. The the error message is C out was not declared in this scope. You have to type. You need to type the full name. The full name is std. Uh, double column. This is the full name of C out. C out is defined in the namespace std. std means standard. So C out is defined in the standard namespace. You need to type the full name. And uh, also you need to type the full name of st of and l. So if you don't use uh, this line, uh, you, if you don't use using namespace std, you need to manually add std double column to every variable. So, and uh, and uh, this is very, uh, th this is not convenient. Uh, so we usually use uh, this line, using namespace std. Uh, this can save you a lot of typing. You don't need to type. Uh, you, you don't need to prefix std double column to every variable. And next, uh, you can use C out to print some 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 constant. Uh, this is constant, or you can print the value of a of a variable. And uh, you can you can print a constant first, and then print the value of a variable. And uh, you if you want pr want to print new line, you can use the backslash. And this is the escape sequence. And uh, or you can also the end of L, or end of line. This is end of line variable defined in the IO string library. Uh, this is also this also means new line. Uh, so you can you can you can either use backslash n or you can use end L to represent uh, the new the new line. Uh, next is about string. In C++, uh, you can use the string variable 
to store the value of a string constant. And later we will cover about this data type. We will uh, we will cover strings in after a midterm. <laughs> after a midterm, we will cover strings. Uh, for example, you want to you want to perform string concatenation. Uh, you can so you want to pr perform. Suppose you want to perform string con concatenation, and uh, you might want to use plus. Uh, however. This is not legal in C++, so you cannot do string concatenation in this way. This results in a syntax error. Uh, you need thi this is because this is not a, a, a built-in data type in in C++. Uh, this is in fact a C a character array. And for, for character array, you, you cannot directly use the plus operator. Uh, however, if you use the string data type, you can perform string concatenation using the plus operator. This is because this data type support this operation. And uh, this data type is defined in the string library. So if you want to use this data type, you need to include this, the string library. So you see that you can use plus to concatenate two stream variables. And uh, we will cover, uh, we, we will uh, show more details about strings in, in later uh, lectures. Uh, the next is about uh, formatting output. If you want to, pl uh, you want if you want to show a floating point, uh, then uh, the the output might be like this. It's uh, after the decimal point, uh, we have six six places, and uh, sometimes you want to adjust. Uh, the number of digits after the decimal place. For and uh, then you can use the following settings. You can, s you, can uh, you, you can configure the, the C out uh, parameters. For, you, for example, you, you can set the decision to two digits. Uh, you can use this line to set the precision of a floating point. This So you see, when you print a floating point, you see that uh, uh, we see uh, you, you sometimes you want to uh, control the number of digits after the decimal place. Then you can use C out to set the precision.
but you see that the procedure is set to two. So the 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 screen shows three point one. Uh, so the two point, you you see, uh, we set the precision to two. You see, you see that uh, two digits uh, after the decimal point. So you can control the precision by this by this statement. And uh, if if we want to read user inputs, we can use the C in object. So uh, now suppose we want to read user input. Uh, so here I, I declare the string variable. And uh, I use C out to print one message. And uh, then uh, the next line, the next line I use C in to read user input and uh, store the user input in this variable. You, uh, we need to pay attention to the, to the direction of this operator. Uh, you 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 note that the direction is from right to left. This means we we direct the string to C L. C L is the console, so you direct this string to the console. So the console will show uh, this string. And the next line, this the direction of this operator is from left to right. This means. Uh, we will direct user input. You will uh, store user input to this variable. So you you direct user input to this variable, and then uh, the next the next line prints the value of uh, the the variable dog name, and we can try to uh, execute. So you see that uh, first you will print uh, this string, what is your dog's name, and then the next line is C is used to C in to read the user input. So you can type any word. You can type any word, and then you press pr press enter. Uh, when you press enter, the user input finishes. Then we go to the next line. The next line prints high and uh, prints the value of a dog name. And the value is nice, so this, this CL prints high, nice. You, you can also try other inputs. For example, I can, uh, this time I, I type A, B, C and the space DEF. So this time I, I input ABC space and DEF. And then I press enter. You see that uh, the next line prints high ABC. This means ABC is uh, stored in dog name. However, the remaining the remain the, the remaining user inputs are not used. Uh, this is because uh, this this is because C in will not read space, so space will be discarded. And uh, 
so and the DEF is the second input. So ABC is the first input. The the first input is store uh in dog name. And the, the sec second input is is still in a buffer and not used because we we do not uh use uh, another variable to save this value. So DEF is stored in in the input buffer. And in this in this example, DEF is not uh is not used. And later we will cover more about C in and C out uh, when we uh, introduce strings. In this chapter, we will we will learn how to read uh, strings from user input. Uh, and uh, we have uh, finished this chapter. Uh, next, uh, we will uh, go to the next chapter. The next chapter is uh, the flow of control. And uh, you can uh, open this file. In, in this chapter, we will learn uh, branching mechanisms like if-else statement and switch statement. We will also learn uh, the the loops. Some sometimes when you want to do do repetitive things, then you you will use loops. And uh, first, uh, we need to learn Boolean expressions, be because this expression will be used in branching mechanisms. Uh, so we introduce Boolean expression first. Uh, we o we already learn expression. I expression is any operation that will uh, generate a value, and the boolean expression means the value generated is of boolean data type. So the value of a boolean expression is either true or false. True and uh, false are keywords in C plus plus. They are constants. And we can generate Boolean. Uh, we can we can generate Boolean values by comparison operators or by logical operators. And uh, uh, I will show some examples. So here I use the comparison operator to generate a Boolean value. So for this for this example, two is less than three. So this expression will generate true. Uh, will gener so true is assigned to x. So true is assigned to x. And uh, if you print the value of x, x is one. Because true is is integer one in C plus uh, plus. If you perform another comp comparison, for for example, I change the larger than. Uh, I change this operator. And in this case, in this case, x is false, because two is not greater than three, so the value of this expression is false. And the force is assigned to x. If we print the value of x, then x is zero, because force is integer zero in C plus plus. You can also compare. Uh, you can also compare 
two variables or two, you, you can compare two variables or constants or compare constants with variables. So we compare y to three. We compare the value of y to three. Then you use this equal to, this is the equal to operator. And uh, this is assignment. So the two are different. So this is the, the two consecutive uh, equal. This, this is known as the equal to operator. Uh, while this single, single equal means assignment operator. So the two operators are different. So we see that uh, this, this operator is equal to operator and it's different from the assignment operator. So, so this is a Boolean expression. And uh, this, this expression will generate false uh, because y is not equal to 3. So, so the value of this expression is false. And uh, if you print x, then x will be 0. And you can change the value of y. If the value of y is 3, then this expression will generate 2. And the value of x is, is 1. You can also use the. Uh, you can also use not equal to, and the uh, not equal to is this uh, operator. So you can also use not equal to. Uh, in this case, this will generate false. So x is zero. And sometimes we want to combine two comparison results. For example, you want to combine uh, A is greater than B and uh, B is greater than C. Sometimes you want to combine the, the two comparison results. And uh, in this case, you will use the logical operator. Uh, we have logical, uh, we, we have end and the or and the not. We have three logical operators. And uh, for the end operator or the or operator, the, the two operators are binary, binary operators. Binary oper operators means this operator has two inputs. The first input is uh, on the left. Uh, the second input is on the right. So this operator has two inputs, ESP1 and the ESP2. And uh, each expression is a Boolean expression. This means each expression is either true or false. So ESP1 is either true or false. ESP2 is, is, is either true or false. And uh, this table this table shows all the possibilities of the combination of ESP1 and the ESP2. And here, here is the third column is the output of the end operator. Uh, if, both, if both inputs are true, then end will output true. Uh, otherwise, Otherwise, end will return false. So for the end, for the logical end operator, only the two inputs are true will, will return true. And for the OR operator, uh, the, the OR operator is also a binary operator. So 
uh, for this, this this operator has two inputs, and uh, each input is either is a boolean expression. Its value is either true or false. And uh, the third column is the the output of the OR operator. And uh, here we see that if either one of the if either one of the input is true, then the output of OR is true. So if either one of the expression one or expression two is true, then uh, the OR logical operator returns true. If if both inputs are false, then OR returns false. So you can try to practice how to use the logical operators. So here, suppose I want to uh, perform comparison. You want to perform Now suppose we want to perform comparison. Uh, we want to compare uh, y to four, and uh, also we want to determine y is not equal to three. We, we want to perform the two comparison, and uh, you want to combine the result of two. Uh, we want to combine the two results. So we see that the first one is is true, right? The, the, the first the first boolean expression is true. Uh, because what uh, three is less than four, so the first boolean expression is is true. And uh, the second boolean expression is 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 false because three. Three is equal to three. So the second, the second boolean expression is false. And uh, we know uh, for the logical end, if either if either one input is false, then the output is false. So this the logical end will return false, and uh, the value of x is is false. So you see that uh, the value of x is zero. And you can also change this operator to OR. So I sub I change this operator to OR. Uh, we know that the left hand side is 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 true. Uh, so the the first the first expression is true. And uh, if if any if either one of the input is true, then OR will return true. So the value of x is true. So you see that uh, the value of x is one. Uh, we also have the third logical operator, not. Uh, not is different from the previous two. Not. Not is the unary operator. Unary means this operator o only ha only has one input. So the not the not operator only has one input. If if its input is true, then the output is false. So the not operator inverts its input. And uh, you can practice uh, how to use not. Now suppose I uh, so let's see this example. Uh, x is true. Uh, x is true. And uh, you, if you want to invert the result, you can use the not not operator. So you can use the not operator. And in this case, you need to add the parentheses. Later, I will explain. Uh, in this case, you need to add the parentheses. Then you can uh, invert the result. 
So you see that the result becomes false. So we can use the NAT, logical NAT, to invert the Boolean expression. Uh, next, I will introduce uh, pr the precedence of operators. Uh, when we, when you write expression like this, uh, you see uh, many operators. We have, we have addition. We have less than or greater than or logical or. We see many operators. Then you need to determine which which operator to carry out first. So you need to determine which operation will be carried out first. And uh, in C++, uh, the compiler determines the precedence uh, from a table. Uh, this is known as precedence table uh, in the blow. Blow is the precedence table. And the uh, operators in in the uh, in the uh, first few rows are of higher precedence. So the NOT is of higher precedence than the multiply operator. And the multiplier is of higher precedence than the addition operator. And the addition operator is of higher precedence than the comparison operator. And uh, the comparison operator is of higher precedence than the logical operator. Logical operator is of higher pr precedence than the assignment operator. And uh, this is also uh, consistent with our intuition. Because in, in uh, our intuition, multiply is uh, of higher precedence uh, than the uh, addition operation. And uh, from this table, uh, you can find that I if you if you look this table closely, you will find some some symbol appear twice. C can you find from this table some symbol appear appear twice? Wh wh which symbol? <coughs> oh, very good. Uh, addition and this one unary plus both up both are plus symbol so th so this symbol uh, appear twice but the two symbols have different precedence the un the unary plus is of higher precedence than the addition operator and uh, here unary means Singles. It, it's a single input op operator. So unary means single input. While addition is binary. Addition is binary uh, operator because if you perform addition like this, the, the addition has two inputs. So addition is binary operator. And unary means, uh, unary plus is mean, means the sign the sign is positive or negative. So here, uh, un un unary plus means the plus sign, and un unary minus means the negative, uh, the, uh, the negative sign. For example, negative 3, this is unary minus, not, not a subtraction. So here, if you write negative 3, then, then this, this this minus is is unary minus, or uh, not a subtraction. 
because the, this operator only has one, one input. So for this expression, uh, negative three will be carried out first because unary minus is of higher precedence. And uh, then the addition will be carried out because addition is the of the second highest precedence. And uh, then the comparison, then the comparison uh, operator. And finally, the logical end. So uh, this expression is in fact uh, equivalent to the following one. Here I use parentheses to uh, to emphasize which operation will be carried out first. But uh, in fact, you don't need to include the parentheses. So if you do not use the parentheses, uh, the, the, the operation will be according to the precedence table. Uh, next are some pitfalls when you use the logical uh, log uh, logical operator. Uh, th this is about uh, the uh, people about the not oper operator. And uh, now suppose Oh, so here is one example. Uh, we have two variables, time and limit. And if time is less than limit, then uh, the, the, then the screen will print uh, time is enough. Otherwise, prints running out of time. So here, uh, time is enough because uh, we, we know uh, time is less than limit. Now suppose you want to invert the result. You, you want to invert this Boolean expression. So you use the not, logical not. So here we use not logical not. And uh, we add a parenthesis to, to the comparison operator. And uh, uh, we, we can use not to invert the result. So you see that the result becomes the, the program prints running out of time because this comparison, the Boolean expression is uh, inverted. However, if you, if you omit this parenthesis, uh, the result will be different. If you omit the parenthesis, let's see. Um, you see that if we omit this parenthesis, the output is time is enough. Uh, it's different from the previous output. And this is because when you when you omit when you omit parenthesis, uh, when you omit the parenthesis, we have two operators, the logical not and the less than. And this oper operator will be carried out first. So first, uh, this, this expression will be carried out first. We have not time. So, so you, you might wonder what, what is uh, not time. Uh, you can try to print the value of not time. We can try to 
print not time. The value is zero. Uh, this is because the input is treated as a uh, Boolean inspiration. And uh, if, I if its value is not zero, uh, if, if the, the value of a Boolean inspiration is not zero, then, then its value will be treated as true. So for, for this example, time is true because it's, it is not zero. And uh, when you invert the, bo the Boolean expression, true becomes false. So, so this line prints zero. So we know uh, we know that we know that the value of this expression is zero because uh, uh, the value is zero and the zero is less than limit because the limit is four. So zero is less than four. So so the final output of the of this expression is 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 true. Oh, so so the 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 final output of this expression is true. So the program will print time is enough. So I if you want to invert the re the the result of a boolean uh, of a comparison operator, then you need to. Uh, remember to add the parentheses around the comparison operat operation. So if you omit this parentheses, then then the not the logical not will be carried out first. Because the the logical not is unary operator, it has higher precedence, and the result of this expression might be different from uh, this expression. And uh, in fact, uh, the textbook suggests avoid using the not operator because it is difficult to understand. Uh, the, the not operator, logical not, is difficult to understand. You can rewrite this expression as this one. You just you if you remove not, you just change the the comparison from greater than to uh, less than or equal to. Uh, in this case, you don't need to use the you don't need to use the logical not. And uh, this expression is easier to understand. So this is also the uh, principle of the clean code. We want our source code to be readable. So you should avoid using some some confusion, uh, some operators that will uh, cause confusion. And uh, the next slide is about strings of inequalities. This means uh, if you use inequality, inequalities consecutively. So uh, when you when we write mathematical uh, expressions, we often write expressions like this. For example, we want to uh, perform uh, x is less than z and uh, z is less than y. And uh, in C++, you cannot write the mathematical expression like this. You should, you should use the logical end to, to combine the two comparisons. You, you cannot directly write uh, two consecutive uh, less than, because 
uh, uh, they have different meanings. Uh, here I will show uh, use one example to illustrate. Oh, so here, uh, so so here, uh, I declare three variables, x, y, z, and uh, next I I declare a boolean variable result, and uh, this boolean variable is uh, the combination of two comparison operators. First, we compare uh, x is less than y, and uh, this is true. Uh, this is true because uh, one is less than two. So the first comparison returns true, and the second comparison is also sorry, sorry. The second com uh, second comparison is false because three is not uh, less than two, so the, so so the second one is false, and uh, we use logical end, so the result is false because either one input is false, so result is false. So you see that the result is zero, and uh, you can test another expression. Uh, sorry. So in this expression, I should use, I should use z. Yeah, I should use z. And the result is zero. You can you can ver verify this by yourself. The result is zero, because z is not less than y. So result is zero. And next, if we test uh, this one, we remove the logical end. You directly use this expression. And uh, let's see what happened. The result is true. If you use this expression, the result is true. And it's different from uh, the above line. And uh, this is because if you write expression like this, then x is less than z will be carried out first. And uh, this will generate uh, one, one, right? This will generate one. Because this is true, uh, one is less than three. So the first comparison will generate true. And the true is one. So the value of this expression is one. And the one is less than y, because y is two. So the final, the final output is, is uh, true. And the true is assigned to result. So result is is true, but this is different from what we want. We want to combine the two compris comparison. So usually we we will usually we don't use this is expression like this. So thi this is because this is this is not what we want. We usually. We usually want to use the we want we, we usually want to combine the result of two compari comparisons. So uh, this is the uh, correct uh, correct uh, correct way to combine two comparisons. Uh, 
Uh, I think the time is up, so uh, let's take a break for 10 minutes.
Uh, hello, uh, let's continue our class. And uh, we have finished the Boolean expression. Next, uh, I will introduce the branching mechanism. So uh, next, uh, we will learn uh, the if else the if else statement and the switch statement. Uh, so and the previous slide is this one short circuit evaluation. I think this is a trick. So uh, you can study this by yourself. So I can I will skip this slide. And uh, let's see the syntax of I if else statements. So if else are keywords, so you see the syntax highlight. So if if else are keywords in C++. And uh, after if after if is a parenthesis. Inside a parenthesis is a Boolean expression. We have we have learned we, we know what is a Boolean expression. And Boolean expression is either true or false. And uh, if if Boolean expression is true, then the yes statement will be executed. Uh, otherwise, the no statement will be executed. So you can try some examples. So let's see this example. Uh, inside the parenthesis is, is true. So uh, the if if a statement is executed, so uh, the program outputs yes. And in fact, you can you can use any integers. For example, I use x is 10. Then here I use x. So, so in this case, uh, x will be transformed to Boolean expression. Because x is integer, th this, is not, this is not Boolean expression. So this value will be transformed to Boolean expression. And uh, any any value other than zero will be converted to true. So this value is not zero. So uh, x will be converted to true. So yes will be printed. And uh, and uh, if x is zero, then x is false. Then else will be printed. Uh, you can try other values. For example, you try negative one. So which which statement will be carried out if if x is negative one? Uh, if you think the answer is yes, uh, please raise your hand if you think the answer is yes. Okay, and if you think the answer is no, please raise your hand. Okay, no, nobody. Uh, the answer is yes. Just the 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 program will print yes. Because uh, negative one is not zero. Ne negative one is different from zero, so this. This will be converted to true. Oh, this will convert it to true. So uh, the program outputs yes. And usually, usually the 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 usually inside the parentheses is we will is a comparison. You, we usually compare some variables to some constants or to some variables. 
So, so, so this is the ordinary example. We inside the parentheses is usually a comparison operator, comparison uh, expression. And for this example, uh, the if state the if statement only only has one single statement. If you need more statement, you need to use the compound statements. Uh, to use compound statements, you need to add a pair of braces. So after after the after prince the princesses, you need to add uh, a pair of braces in order to uh, include more statements. He here is one example. I will show this example to to use the compound statements. So I will use this example to demonstrate uh, the compound statements. So let's see uh, this example. Uh, I declare two variables, uh, my score and your score. And in this case, my score is larger than your score. So the two statements inside the braces will be carried out. So after after the if statement, uh, wager is becomes uh, 150. So this this line will print 150. So the program prints I win, and uh, and the wager is added by 100. So uh, finally, the value of wager is 150. Uh, however, if you change uh, the value of my score to 10, then the two s then the two statements will not be uh, executed. So the value of wager is its initial value 50. Uh, so, so if we change the the value of my score and your score, then then the comparison returns false. Next, suppose next, uh, suppose I remove these braces. 
I remove the braces. Then you run this program again. And can you know the can you know the value of wager? The value is fifty or one hundred fifty. Uh, if you think uh, the the answer is uh, fifty, please raise your hand. If you you think the answer is fifty, uh, after the statement. If you think the the answer is fifty, and uh, if you think the answer is one hundred fifty, please raise your hand. So nobody knows the answer. Uh, the identification do not affect. You you can compile. This is legal. Uh, the the file can be compiled. You see, I compile this file. It's it's no errors. This is correct. The oh. so this. So. So you mean the the program can? Oh, I think let's just see. Uh. Right. Yes. So, so also I ask, I ask after the statements, you compute the value of wager. Fifty. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, let's see the result. Let's see. The result is one hundred fifty. Uh, thi this is because, this is because. Uh, don't be confused by the identification. Uh, don't be confused by the ident I identification means the leading spaces. In fact, uh, this line is outside the if statement. So this line is is outside the if statements. So this line always be executed regardless the is the if state uh, the if statement is true or false. So because because this statement is outside the if statement, so this this statement always be will be always be executed. So the the output is one hundred fifty. If you want to include this this line into the if statement, you need to use a pair of braces. So you need to include this. Uh, so so uh, this is a common pitfall. Y if you forget, if you forget uh, to add a pair of branches, then the if statement only can contain single line. Uh, so it is a good habit to always. Uh, it is a good habit to always include a pair of branches after the if statement. Uh, even single line is okay. In s you you can also use a single line uh, with a pair of braces. So uh, so so this is a. Uh, uh, a common pitfall uh, mean uh, to forget uh, it to insert braces if you want to use compound statement. And uh, for the if statement, you can omit the else. So sometimes you don't need to use 
the else part. So you can uh, use if like this. Uh, and uh, this slide shows another pitfall. Sometimes you want to perform comparison. You want to compare x uh, is whether x is equal to some variable. But you 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 have some uh, typo. You forget to type uh, the equal equal symbol. Then this becomes the assignment. And uh, this this might lead to different uh, program outputs. Uh, let's see this example. So first, I uh, initialize x with ten, and then I if I use the if statement to compare x is uh, to to decide whether x is equal to twelve. If yes, then program prints uh, yes. Otherwise, prints no. So the, the so for this example, the program will print no. And uh, however, if you if you missing one uh, equal symbol, for example, you 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 forget to type uh, double equal, then this is legal syntax. So the compiler shows no error mes message. This is legal. However, we will have different results. Uh, you, you see that the program uh, prints yes. And, and this is because if you perform assignment, uh, if you perform assignment, then the value of this assignment operator is 12. So here will become 12. And we, we know 12 is, is not 0. So, so 12 will be treated as true. So inside the parentheses, parentheses is, the, uh, is, the, is true. And the therefore, uh, the if statement will be executed. Uh, so uh, the program outputs yes, and uh, this slide suggests uh, you can you you can exchange the order of x and twelve to avoid uh, to avoid uh, this kind of this kind of error. So you can, for example, you can exchange. So you can exchange x and twelve, and and this case, uh, pro program outputs no, and uh, if you you forget to type one, uh, you you only type one single, you only type one single uh, equal symbol, and uh, this time the compiler can detect the error. So you see that thi this time compiler can detect this error because uh, we cannot assign a variable to some constant. So for assignment, the right hand, the left hand side must be a variable. 
So you see the error message, uh, error value. Error value is the value on the left hand side. The left hand side must be a variable. So compiler can detect this kind of error. So you, you can follow the suggestion of the of, of this slide. And uh, usually we we when we write code we we don't perform assignment inside the parentheses of the if statement. Uh, we we usually don't do this. This this happens only when you when you when when you made a typo, you forget to type uh the equal symbol. Uh, the next slide uh, introduce the nested if else statement. This means uh, inside the if statement uh, you can use another if else, and uh, you can repeat repeatedly uh, use if statement inside if statements, and uh, this is known as nested if else. We also have a uh, multi-way if else statement. So besides if else, you can you can put uh, else if statement between if and else. So uh, here is one example. Uh, for example, the first if statement uh, check whether temperature is less than negative ten and the uh, day is equal to Sunday. Sunday is a constant. It's a, you, 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 you can think, uh, you can think a, a Sunday as a, in, in a con integer constant. And, and uh, if the Boolean expression is true, then the, the following statement will be executed. Otherwise, if this if th this expression is false, then the the program will c the the compiler will uh, proceed to the next statement, and this is the else if statement. So if if this expression is false, then the compiler will proceed to the else if part. However, if this expression is true, then the 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 whole if else statement is finished. So if this statement is true, then the whole after after executing uh, this line, then the the if else statement is finished. And uh, if this expression is false, then uh, the compiler proceed to the next line, else if, and uh, this will determine whether temperature is less than negative 10. Uh, if, if, if yes, then the program will print stay home but co-work. And uh, so if, it, if this expression is true, then uh, the, the, the if else statement will ter terminate it here. However, if this expression is false, then the compiler will proceed to the next uh, to the next uh, statement to the ne to the next else if and uh, until the so you see that the boolean expression are checked in order so from uh, from top to the bottom until the first true is boolean expression is encountered. So you see that uh, if you use the multi-way if else statement, the Boolean expression will be checked in order until the first true Boolean expression is encountered. Uh, you you can 
uh, you can use some example to practice how to use the uh, multi-way if else statement. So here is the example. Uh, I declare the temperature variable uh, with initial value negative 20, and the day is uh, 7. So the first, the first Boolean expression is satisfied. So the program will print output, uh, will output stay home. And then you can modify, uh, you can modify, for example, I modify day to one. And if you modify day to one, you, you will notice uh, this comparison is false. This comparison is false. And the layer for the first Boolean expression is false. So we will proceed to the next one. The next one is temperature is less than negative 10. And uh, this, this this returns true, so program will print stay home but co work. You can also try other inputs. For example, I change it to uh, negative five. If you use negative five, then the first Boolean expression is false. The second Boolean expression is also false. So we will proceed to this if else. So the program will print dress warm. Uh, you can also change the input, for example, change it to five. If temperature is five, then the if the the, the if statement is false, else if statement is also false. Uh, this one is also false. So we will go to the else part. So if the temperature is 5, the program will print uh, work hard and play hard. So you can try to use different uh, input and then you can pr uh, predict the output by yourself to see whether you understand uh, the is the execution of the multi-way if else statements. Uh, the next one I will introduce another branching mechanism, uh, the the switch statement, and uh, its syntax is like this. Uh, the switch is keyword, and also the case is also a keyword. Uh, break is also a keyword, and the uh, default is also a keyword. So you 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 have we see many keywords. Keywords means you cannot use these words as variable name. Uh, you cannot use keyword as uh, variable names. And the uh, after switch is a uh, parenthesis. Inside the parenthesis is a controlling expression. Controlling expression is is either a boolean value or uh, some integer or some character or some enumeration constant. Uh, you can skip this one. Uh, you can skip. You you can treat this as integers. So. 
con controlling Boolean expression is either a Boolean value or integer or a character. Like this, this is integer. So he here, uh, vehicle class is the controlling expression. And uh, it can be integer like this, or it can be character or Boolean value. And uh, we know that uh, after the parentheses, we have a pair of braces. Uh, this is the compound statement. So after, after the parentheses is the compound statement. And uh, then we write the case keyword. And uh, after the case is a constant, uh, is a constant, e either integer or character. And uh, after the constant, we uh, is followed by a column. Uh, followed by, and after the column is the statement inside this case. And inside the case, we can have uh, mul mul multiple statements. And uh, if we want to terminate this case, you can use break. So for example, vehicle class is one. Then, then the program will go to case one, and uh, execute the two statement, the two statements, and uh, then the break, the break statement will terminate this switch. Uh, however, if you you do not include the break statement, the 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 program will continues to the next case. So if you if you omit the break statement, uh, the program will proceed to the next case. And uh, here, uh, I will use this example to illustrate how to use switch. So uh, first, I declare uh, uh, one integer variable with initial value one, and I also declare a floating point variable tau. Its initial value is zero. And uh, this is switch statement, uh, and the vehicle class is the controlling expression. It's the controlling expression, and because its value is one, so we go to case one. So the the program will print passenger car, and the toll is is set to zero point five, and then the switch terminates, and uh, then after the switch, after after the switch, uh, I print the value of toll. So for this example, you see, uh, you see, the program prints passenger car. And uh, and this C L prints tall is zero point five, uh, because uh, tall is set to zero point five inside case one. And uh, you can also try another case, for example, case two. If vehicle class is two, then this way this switch will go to case two. The program will print bus. And the toll is set to 1.5. So uh, if vehicle class is two, then uh, switch goes to case two. And the case two will print bus. And after the switch, uh, the value of toll is printed is uh, 1.5 because uh 
in case two we set tall to 1.5. And uh, we can also try more examples. Now suppose I use uh, vehicle class is one, and uh, I I remove the break statement. Uh, now suppose we remove the break statement, and uh, you can see the program out output will be different. If we omit this line. Uh, Vehicle class, vehicle, vehicle class is one, so switch goes to case one. Program prints passenger car, and the toll is set to 0 0.5. And the because the brake is is removed, then we, the because the brake is removed, so the switch does not terminate. We will go to case two, so the program will print bus and the toll is set to 1.5. So you notice that if I if I delete the break statement, uh, the program first prints go to case one. In case one, we'll print passenger car, and the toll is set to 0 0.5. And then we proceed to case two, and the case two will print bus. And the next toll is set to 1.5. So, and the finally, uh, after switch, uh, the program prints the value of toll. So, if you if if you do not include the break statement, then uh, the program will have different outputs. And you can also try another one. For for example, you you omit a break in case two, then you this one. Oh, now suppose vehicle class is two, and uh, you omit the break statement in case two, and you can try to compile uh, this program. Uh, you see that. If vehicle class is two, then we go to case two. And pro the program prints bus. And the toll is set to 1.5. Uh, however, uh, the switch does not terminate. So we go to the default. We go to the default. Default means uh, if vehicle is not one or two, then we will go to the default case. So. So if your vehicle class is not in the previous cases, then uh, the switch will go to the default, the default, default case. And the in default case, uh, program will print unknown vehicle class. So the here, uh, print unknown vehicle class. Uh, sometimes we we will break we will we will uh, omit the break statement. Uh, for example, you want uh, you want uh, you want to perform case insensitive. You want uh, you want uh, uppercase a or lowercase a to to print the same message. Then you can omit the break uh, after the first case. So sometimes you can deliberately to omit the break statement. So here is one example. You, you omit.
Uh, so here is is one example. Uh, the choice is B. So choice B goes to this case, and program prints good. You got a B. And uh, you can use also use uppercase. Uh, you can also use uppercase. Uh, programs output are the same. Okay. So if you want to achieve uh, case insensitive, then you can uh, remove the break in one case. You can also you 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 can also do this. For example, you can. Uh, this is the same for case A. Then you perform, uh, you print this message, and for lo lower case A, you print the same message. Uh, but doing this, you, uh, you, you, uh, repetitively doing the same statement. Uh, so. So if if you want the two case to carry out the same statement you can uh, you can you can remove this break you can remove this break and also you can also remove this statement because uh, this this statement is the same as this one so you can remove this statement so you can combine the two cases uh, if you want to combine two cases you can you can re you can remove the break statement so here is one example to show you can combine two cases to to share uh, some statements. And the switch is is used when you uh, when you need big picture view or you need some menu like this this is a menu uh, this me this menu ha has many choice uh, for example open or uh, save so so e so each each choice is a case so each, each choice is a case so when you when you need the menu structure you can consider use uh, the switch statement and uh, each each case is is a choice. Uh, the next slide is about another operator. Oh, this this operator is known as conditional operator. It is related to I the if else operator. This operator is very weird because this operator has two uh, has two symbols: uh, the the question symbol and the column symbol. And uh, this operator has three inputs, so this operator is a ternary operator. So this uh, this operator has three inputs. This is the first input, the second input, the third input. So the conditional oper the conditional operator has three inputs and therefore it is a ternary operator and uh, uh, this operator is a shorthand notation for the if else operator so if you want to perform if else like this you can rewrite this as uh, using the conditional operator so for example, you want to assign some value to max. Depends depends on uh, whether n1 is greater than n2. If this is true, then n1 is assigned to max. Otherwise, n2 is assigned to max. And uh, you, can, you can use the conditional operator to, uh, to have a shorthand, a shorthand notation. 
uh, you can write this in single line like this. The first expression, uh, the first input is the Boolean expression, uh, the comparison, uh, the Boolean expression. If this Boolean expression is true, then uh, the conditional operator will return the second input. So if if the first the first input is true, then n one will be returned, and the n one will be assigned to max. If the first expression is false, then the third input will be returned. So if the first expression is false, then n two will be assigned to max. And uh, you you will see that the two the two statements uh, results the same uh, produce the same result. So this is a shorthand notation for the if else operator. This is from the C programming language. And uh, I do not suggest uh, using this operator uh, because if you combine too many statement in a single line, this can uh, lower the readability of your source code. However, if your if if the statement is very short, you can try like this. You can use uh, you can write statement like this. You can use the condition operator. If you, if the statements are very short, however, if the statements are very long, I, I do not suggest. Uh, using the condition operator because you will lower the readability of your source code. Uh, this is sometimes is very convenient. Uh, Uh, so we see that uh, n1 is greater than n2. So 1 is assigned to x, so the value of x is 1. However, if if uh, if n2 is 3, then n1 is not greater than n2, so this Boolean expression is false, then x will be negative 1. Uh, so this this Condition operator is convenient if you want to perform some uh, if else in single line. Uh, today's cl class is over, so I think we can now dismiss.